In this video, we will study the pathological features of infectious enterocolitis and pseudomembranous colitis. So let's start with the infectious enterocolitis. In infectious enterocolitis, the word colitis means inflammation of colon. So infectious enterocolitis involves infection of the colon. For microscopic features, the features are cryptic infiltration of neutrophils that is visible as cryptitis or cryptabscesses, laminar propria and intraepithelial neutrophils. And the third point is that crypt architecture is preserved. So let me explain you these points. Now the first important point to know that the epithelial lining of large intestine or colon is not composed of villi. But still the epithelium invaginates deep into the lamina propria to form crypts. So the epithelium of colon is in form of crypts and it also contains cryptic glands. Now the first point was that in infectious enterocolitis, the neutrophils that are activated against the bacteria can infiltrate these crypts and sometimes they accumulate in the crypts to form crypt abscesses. So you see cryptic infiltration of neutrophils and you also see cryptic abscesses. Secondly, these neutrophils also infiltrate the epithelial layer and the lamina propria. So you see intraepithelial and lamina propria invasion of neutrophils. Third point was that in infectious enterocolitis, these crypts architecture is preserved. So these crypts appear normal. Why this point is important? Because there are some diseases such as inflammatory bowel diseases that include Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. In these diseases, there is long term inflammation. So the long term inflammation causes destruction of these cryptic structures. But in infective enterocolitis, as the acute inflammation is not very long lasting, so this cryptic architecture is characteristically preserved. So let me again revise the features. You see cryptic infiltration of neutrophils in cryptitis and cryptabscesses. You see lamina propria and intraepithelial neutrophils and you see cryptic architecture is preserved. So these are the features of infective enterocolitis. Now let's come to the pathological features of pseudomembranous colitis. In pseudomembranous colitis, on gross specimen you see pseudomembranes coating the colon. These pseudomembranes are actually yellowish or greyish exudates that line the inside of colon. So you see pseudomembranes in pseudomembranous colitis. Secondly, on microscopic picture, you see superficial epithelium is denuded, neutrophils are present in lamina propria, and there is volcanic eruption of mucopurulent exudate from crypts, just like this. So let me explain. For example, again, this is the epithelial lining of colon, and these are the crypts. Now this epithelial lining that lines this epithelial basement membrane is denuded by the destruction caused by the pseudomembranous colitis. So firstly you see denudation of this epithelium. Secondly you see neutrophils in the lamina propria. So you see neutrophils in the lamina propria. Thirdly pseudomembranous colitis is a condition which is characterized by a lot of exudation. So the exudates that are accumulated here and the neutrophilic abscesses that are formed here create an appearance as if a volcano is erupting from here. This feature is called volcanic eruption. So you see superficial epithelium is denuded, there are neutrophils in the lamina propria and you see volcanic eruption of mucopurulent exudate from the crypts. So these are the features of pseudomembranous colitis.